So for the next uh, two hours or so, we're going to go through post tension one-way beams and slabs. Um, as Marina mentioned, if you have a question, please type it uh, in the box, and then between the breaks, I'll do my best to try to answer those questions uh, and move forward. So again, uh, there's a lot to cover here, but if I miss something or need to explain something further, uh, please tell me to do so, and I'll be happy to do my best. So we're going to talk about basically long-span garages in this webinar topic. Now, you can obviously use a one-way slab and beam system in other applications, but typically, at least in um, in recent years, the majority of PT long span structures in terms of slabs, one-way slabs and um, beams are garages, but again, I'm not saying you can't do it, it's just predominantly right now, office buildings, stuff like that are done in two-way slabs, but big garages are done in long span systems. So you have a one-way PT slab, which we're gonna cover the design aspects. Those are then supported by a post tension beam design. And then those are every now and then supported by a PT girder design. So we're gonna quickly go through the design of the slab itself, basically how it should be done in terms of the post tension design, what we look for, similarly for the PT design of the beams, and then subsequently the girders. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about are some construction issues or things you should look for doing an observation or to have a discussion with your uh, inspector who's on site. Now, most of the webinar is gonna focus um, on uh, one of the chapters or two of the chapters in our book, post tension Concrete Principles and Practice, that's currently in its third edition. Uh, if any of this is interesting, in, interesting to you or you want to learn more, the, the book is available in a PDF or hardback version through uh, SK Goshen Associates. As Maria mentioned, the first half of the book is the introductory, oh, sorry, the, and the introduction of post and concrete that you would take in an undergraduate course. And the last chapter is um, basically how you do quote unquote real world activities, one of them being long span garages, go through two way slabs, podium structures, diaphragms, um, slabs on ground, stuff like that. It's currently used at several universities, um, at least in my neck of the woods, Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo, and UCLA and Cal State LA. So if you are interested, um, it's about 300 pages long and there's a lot of pictures um, to help explain the numerics of post tenting. So in general, long span garages, they are characterized by relatively thin slabs supported by deep beams relative to their slab thickness. The benefit is you have large open areas created by these long spanning beams. Long spanning being roughly in the 60 to 63 foot uh, span range. So you have a large, you know, 60 foot or 60 plus feet of face of column to face of columns uh, open area, which is very, you know, great for parking and drive aisle. So it uh, works very well for that application. The PT slabs are one way systems. Obviously, if a slab is going, let's say, 20 feet one direction and 65 feet in the other direction, obviously it's only designed for a one way. Um, strength because of the difference in geometry. Typically, depending on what system you use, and I'll get to that later on, um, it's either between a five to an eight inch PT slab. Now, one of the characteristics of long span garage is they are very contractor driven. Uh, most of the time, contractors that build long span garages only build long span garages. They won't do two way flat plates. They own their own beam forms. They own their construction system. So if I'm working for, you know, uh, Smith contractors, they're going to tell me what beam size to use because that's the forms they have. They like a certain column size. They like a certain girder size. It's very contractor driven because these are typically parking structures that are done in large scales. Let's say um, airports, uh, hotels, we're talking 1,000, 2,000 car garages. These things are not architectural, you know, um, award-winning elements. A lot of times they're just to park cars in the back of the facility. So they want economical, they want a lot of cars, and they want it as economical as possible. Typically the best way to do that is get a contractor involved and make sure it, you know, keep everybody, um, you know, on the straight and narrow and make sure the thing is economical. So in my neck of the woods in the West Coast, we typically use a five-inch slab going about 18 to 19 feet. A beam is about three feet deep, going about 63 feet plus or minus every 18 feet on center. Uh, some other structures will go about 27, 28 feet between beams. So the slab is more in the seven and a half to eight inch range. The beams are a little wider, about the same system depth. And again, it's really contractor driven on what system you particularly want to use. But also, like I said, these things are really contractor driven. And a lot of times they drive the boat and the design much more than the engineer does 
in comparison to say a two-way flat blade hotel system, whereas the columns are you know much more architecturally sensitive. Typically in, in our systems, a 36, 35 inch deep beam will span approximately 60 feet plus or minus. Uh, you have a 36 inch deep girder that will span between 36 and 54 feet, depending on how many beams that girder is supporting. So again, the system itself is limited to about three feet, which uh, obviously is a, is um, one of the characteristics or one of the defining characteristics of the floor height of the building, 